I like to defend myself just a second. We're on the stag do. Our mate Cal, right, he's about that big, and I'm about that big. So he was drunk on the road, and I thought, I thought I'd give him a little bit of a piggyback, and as we came back to the house, he was on my back, I was being chival chivalrous, and I, is that the right word, mate? Chivalrous. It sounds a bit gay. Sounds a bit <laughs> So I, uh, I got him on my back, I'm giving him a piggyback, and as I sort of did the dismount like that, he snapped his ankle in two places. So, you know, we sent him a text today saying, you're going to be here. He said, well, I could be there, but I'm going to hold my feet above my head and have injections every two minutes to, uh, to keep myself going, so I might give it a miss. So Cal's not here, but it wasn't my fault, it was his fault. I'm sorry if that cuts into your speech, mate. Everyone like to give us a clap for the best man. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Felicity, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to you all for coming and making this such a special occasion today. It's, it wouldn't have been anything without you. And that's really special that you all came to support Greg and Rachel for their future. When Greg rang me to explain that I was going to be his best man, I was obviously over the moon. He said to me, he said, you know, you have to, you have to write a speech for us. And I said, that's fine, don't worry about it. He said, you can write whatever you want. You can say anything in the world. So I went away and, of course, I hatched a scheme to say all the dirty, grotesque stories from our history that we've always had. And he rang me back two hours later to say, actually, in the way that Greg does, actually, he put specific well, specifications on, on my speech. He said to me, you can't mention the time when you, I left you in Snowdonia with all those Welsh guys in the club. You can't mention those broken glasses on that police station. You can't mention what I did with your bath, with your boat in the bath when you were younger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was you. You can't. <laughs> you made me do it. <laughs> you can't mention what he put in my cup as a two-year-old and make me and made me drink. And I'm not allowed to mention that lonely night on Hartshead Pike that we spent together in the cold hugging each other. <laughs> it was a special night. <laughs> I would have more stories from the stag. But unfortunately, Greg was tucked up in bed at 11 o'clock. Hey! After I carried him home with him yeah. refusing to walk up the hill. He refused to walk up the hill because he said he couldn't walk, but he could run. <laughs> <laughs> so he ran all the way up the hill to his house. I will be around for the rest of the evening. If you want to know any of these stories in detail, <laughs> private, private audiences will be allowed. My brother's always been a mentor to me. Ever since I was very young, I looked up to him. And I realized that what he did, I would like to do as well. So when it, he achieved academic success, I decided I was going to do it as well. I was speaking to what Mark Warren Smith, who was our religious studies teacher at school, and he told me a story which echoes something I was going to say in my speech. And he said to me, when you came to your first A-level class, I told you your brother had got an A. And he knew that I was going to have to get an A. He saw it in my face. And that characterizes my relationship with Greg, really. Because I knew anything that he did, I would have to do or do better. Or try my hardest. So I, I ended up going to university and I ended up studying in London with my brother. The same course. Anthropology. Does anyone know what that is? <laughs> There's only a few people that do. Anyway, we both admit that was actually a big mistake, studying anthropology. It's a load of crap. So it um, I, yeah, it took three years. So they could have told me earlier. That would have been bad. Um, I also, I think, got my adventurous spirit from my brother. He's always off on adventures. Or, you know, when he was younger, when he finished university, he'd be off on these crazy adventures. He'd ring me up from Spain and say, 
there's something outside my tent, there's these creatures outside my tent, and I'd be like, wow, <laughs> I don't want to be there, right, <laughs> no, no, I, he's done a lot of things in his past, and I, when I was younger, I looked up to that, and I got my adventurous spirit from him, so thank you, brother, for all those things you've given me. Greg and Rachel first met at university. Um, um, Rachel's friend asked her if she fancied anyone at university as a campus. And Rachel replied, yeah, that small guy with the glasses that looks, looks like Harry Potter. <laughs> so Rachel's friend decided that she would um, make this arrangement that they would meet at a shared party. So Rachel came along and she was waiting patiently for her husband to be, actually. Um, and this guy turned up. This guy turned up. My brother. My brother turned up. And Rachel realised that that was not the guy she was describing. <laughs> there must have been another guy that looked like Harry Potter. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, Alexi. You guys all know the back, Alexi. It was Alexi. She fancied um. Alexi. <laughs> she ended up with me. In any case, we can all agree that she made the right choice on that evening. I think, but I've never met the guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Over the last decade, I think it's a decade now actually, um, 12 years, over a decade, I've got to know Rachel, and we've had some interesting times. With Greg, times are always interesting. You can't help it. Something interesting always happens. And Rachel and myself have both been party to that on many occasions. But I'm not going to talk about Greg anymore, I'm going to talk about Rachel. Yes, not okay. I'm going to talk about Rachel. Um, Rachel, for me, has been a real rock for our family, and me especially, throughout the last ten years, really. She always makes you feel calm, and she gives you, she has an energy that makes you feel like you can just relax. And that's something really special for people that can't relax, like me and my brother. <laughs> <laughs> She has this energy that you just feel when you're around her, and it, it makes you feel calm and collected. And she's so good at everything she does. She's run a business by herself. Yeah. She, and she, she doesn't ever say anything about it, but she runs a business. She multitasks every day. And she has Greg to look after. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say to Rachel that, like, welcome to our family. I don't think you need a welcome, because we've known you so well over the tw last 12 years, but honestly, like, we are your family now. If you didn't know it before, then now is the time, and I hope that for the future we'll remember that, and that, that's going to be something really important for me and the rest of the family as well. Um, in many ways, Greg and Rachel complement each other. Rachel's so relaxed, and Greg's so highly strung. So they kind of meet in the middle. Sometimes. <laughs> um, but they, honestly, they do make a really amazing couple. They complement each other, they're yin and yang. And they, they really work together very well as a team. And I've seen it in action both in business and at home with Noah, and it's a really nice thing to see. Because even through hard times and good times, you guys are still together and you're still with each other. And there's nothing that stops that. And I'm really, you know, that, that's really important to me, for someone to be there through thick and thick. And it wouldn't be right without saying it's something about Noah, would it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's going to be wrong. I wanted to say something. Um, Noah's just amazing. I mean, he's a real product of Greg and Rachel's relationship. He's so relaxed. And he's so... They've allowed him to be exactly the man he wants to be. And you can see it already as his own personality. And so I really wanted to talk about him as just like a, a representation of their relationship. Because they produced him. And it's a really good image. Is that weird? But 
know he's really cool, and I love him to pieces. I can't imagine. I, I, I'm worried about having children because I don't think they're going to live up to know. I don't, I'm not sure I can serve them anymore. It's so cool. I can't help you. No, he is cool. Um, so I'd just like to say everyone in this room knows the last couple of years have been very difficult for everyone. And today what I want to do is I want to really look to the future for Greg and Rachel together and Noah. And I want to wish them the, the happiness that they deserve for the future together. So can we all stand up and can we all give a toast to the bride and groom and a big cheer. The bride and groom! The bride and groom! The bride and groom! Do a little rap for everyone now. <laughs> I'll save it for later. <laughs> That's the end of the speeches. Everyone relax. We'll be food will be here in a minute. Thanks very much. Thank you.